Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, so great is the love of God. Maria Dyer was born in 1837 on the mission field in China, where her parents were pioneer missionaries. Both her parents died when Maria was a little girl, and she was sent back to England to be raised by an uncle. The loss of her parents, however, did not deter her young heart from the importance of sharing the gospel. At age 16, she, along with her sister, returned to China to work in a girls' school as a missionary herself. Five years later, she married Hudson Taylor, a man well known today for his life of ministry, faith, and sacrifice. Hudson and Maria's work were often criticized even by other Christians. At one point, Maria wrote, as to the harsh judgings of the world or the more painful misunderstandings of Christian brethren, I generally feel that the best plan is to go on our work and leave God to vindicate our cause. Of their nine children, only four survived to adulthood. Maria herself died of cholera when she was just 43, but she believed the cost was worthy of the sacrifice. On her grave marker, these words were inscribed, for her to live was Christ and to die was gain. In a time when many are self-absorbed and care more about what they can achieve than what they can contribute, we need a renewal of sacrificial love. It was God's love for us that sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins. And it is that kind of generous love that our world needs so badly today. When we love God, our interests and ambitions fade away as we magnified Him. In today's reflection, the scriptures describe in detail how great and difficult to calculate is the love of God. We read, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Psalms 103 verses 11 to 12. The scriptures in this psalm says that God's love is as high as the heavens are above the earth. In his time, it was common for David to look upon the heavens and marvel at the creative and mighty power of the Lord. He spent much of his life outdoors as a shepherd tending his father's sheep and as a fugitive from King Saul. David probably did not understand the staggering distance between earth and the stars above, as we human beings pretend to know today. However, he recognized them as extremely distant and knew that God's love for his people extended even further than that. Christ's death on the cross for us is the best yardstick to measure God's love for us. John 3.16 tells us that God's love was 
great and powerful enough to give His only Son in sacrifice for us sinners. No power on earth can divert His love for us. Tribulation, anguish, persecution, nakedness, danger, and the sore cannot separate us from God's infinite love. Those who accept Christ are saved, and those who reject Him are lost for eternity. Ask yourself, how high are the heavens from the earth? If you were to get on a spaceship, assuming that you could already travel in a ship that never runs out of fuel, could we reach the ends of the universe? Absolutely not. We would die without even leaving our own galaxy. In other words, God's love is unlimited because it never runs out or ends. Now, let's wonder how far the east is from the west. If you get on a jet with unlimited fuel and start heading east, you can keep traveling east forever and never meet the west at all. In other words, the phrase as far as the east is from the west would mean that our sin and God would be infinitely separated, never to be reunited again because they are cast into distant oblivion. Let's delve a little more into this concept. Could you calculate the distance from Earth to the infinite corner of the universe? There is no way to comprehend it, much less to calculate that distance because it is immeasurable. As much as you and I want to understand the love of God, it is impossible to imagine, to visualize, and much less to understand it. Let us stand for a moment outside our planet, in space, in the void. Let's talk about cardinal points, east, west, north, south, height, and depth. Let's ask ourselves the question, how great is the expansion of the universe in all directions? Because we know that the universe expands in all known directions. Well, astronomers think that the space outside the universe that we can observe could be an infinite extension of what we see in the cosmos distributed practically the same as in the observable universe. In other words, translation, we do not know, as it is impossible to calculate. So, then let's talk about the universe that we can observe. The distance between Earth and the edge of the observable universe, this is key. Scientists calculate that it is 46 billion light years which makes the diameter of the observable universe about 93 billion light years. I want to go back and emphasize that is what they think because it cannot be confirmed. Now, let's start to figure out what we just mentioned. What is a light year? The light year is a unit of length used to express astronomical distances and is equal to 9.46 trillion kilometers, or approximately 5.88 trillion miles. According to the definition of the International Astronomical Union, a light year is the distance a beam of light travels in a single Earth year. Now, if that's the distance of one light year, then multiply 9.46 trillion kilometers by 46 billion light years. Do you already have the answer? Have you already calculated it? Here we need the mathematical physicist to help us out. I don't know about you, but it already gave me a headache just to imagine the result of that mathematical calculation. I don't think there is a calculator with enough digits to calculate that answer. You simply have to calculate the result with exponents. So I go back and repeat, translation, impossible to know. Now tell me, are you beginning to grasp what the verse is trying to tell us about the love of God? 
Do you now have an idea of the greatness of God's love? His love is infinite, immeasurable, and incalculable. Those words, in fact, fall short and small when wanting to explain the dimensions of God's love. It's for that reason that David, the psalmist, said, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Psalm 19 and verse 1. And in Psalms 8 he wrote, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings that you care for them. Psalm 8, verse 3 to 4. Yet, even with how small we are in comparison to God's complete creation, He so fit to choose us to pour out His love, rescue us, and make us partakers of the promise and inheritance of His Son, Jesus Christ, in the heavens. In Psalm 103, David is preaching to his own soul. He tells his soul to bless the Lord and not to forget all his benefits. When we choose to remember what God has done and is doing for us, our soul will automatically rejoice and bless his holy name. Let's take each verse and see what God wants us to learn and know about him. How great is His great love for all who fear Him! It is as high as the heavens are above the earth. In other words, God's love is so great that we cannot measure it in any way. It is unlimited and unfathomed. We can try to put words to it, but we soon realize that our works fall short. God's love is immeasurably high, and His great love is unshakable. It does not change, and it is consistent and reliable. There is no better analogy to describe the absolute act of mercy through the forgiveness that God gives to His people through Jesus Christ. When we are forgiven, our shame disappears and vanish forever. Our guilt is forever forgiven. Our debt has been paid forever. We have been free from our transgressions for all eternity. We see the tender compassion of our Heavenly Father, a compassion that understands our weaknesses. He knows our framework and fully understands our shortcomings and what we are made of, a handful of dust. He shows us compassion that we don't deserve and that we did nothing to earn. He moves towards us like a tender father who is filled with compassion for his little children. Thus, in these verses, we are presented with three of the most beautiful, appropriate, and comforting similarities in the world. When we lift our eyes and contemplate around us the lofty and stupendous vault of heaven which surrounds us, protects us, illuminates and refreshes us, appreciate the earth and all the things in it. These wonders invite us to contemplate as in a mirror the immeasurable height and limitless extension of God's love. In the New Testament, Paul repeated what has been well known for millennia concerning the love of God and the love of Christ. He wrote in the letter to the Ephesians, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 18 to 19. The Apostle Paul said, May you experience, and I tell you today with my heart and my hand also that it is my desire that we together experience the immeasurable love of God. He offers with open hands what our soul needs, which is the forgiveness of sins. 
the guilt of our sins, of our person and conscience. What we must understand is that He has completely forgiven us to never remember them again. Like a father, He pity us. No father can be more forgiving and tender-hearted with his returning children than the Lord with those who are so reformed with his punishments as to fear offending him again. My dear friend and brother, the heavens proclaim the greatness of God, his love and his mercy that cannot be measured. Because God so loved this world that to prove it, He sent His only Son to die for us sinners. The highest expression of His love that has no understanding and cannot be calculated. He agreed to see His own Son suffer on the cross of Calvary. We need to respond to that immeasurable love by giving our heart to Him and let Him guide us until the day we die. That's how great the love of God is. Our kind, loving, and merciful God, although it is difficult for us to understand your immeasurable love. We want to surrender our life to you today and beg you to take us in your loving hands and guide us as your children. We declare this day that you are the only true God and that Jesus Christ is our only way to salvation. Accept our humble hearts today because we come begging you to receive our gratitude in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.